Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Well, uh, we're at the end of January 2019, the year is well and truly underway now, uh, and that means another month has gone by, another month of bike news. So stick around and stay tuned if you're interested to find out what's happened in the UK bike press in the month of January 2019. Okay, now due to a weird quirk of the way that uh, publishing, the holidays and all that kind of stuff works out, I've actually got uh, five copies of MCN to go through this time. So you're going to have to uh, get yourself a brew, sit down, make yourself comfy. This could go on a bit. In fact, if it goes on too much, I might make this into a two-parter. So uh, if this is quite a short one, there'll be a part two coming along later. But anyway, the other thing is, I read all these, some of them some time ago, and marked these all up ready for this video, uh, and I haven't reviewed them since. So uh, some of this is going to be as much of a surprise to me as it is to you. Anyway, without further ado, let's crack on. Right, the first paper, which uh, looking at the uh, the headline on here, Triumph 2019 star, seems like ages ago that we were talking about the scrambler. But anyway, let's see what I'm mocked up in here. It's a bit of a be news to me as well as you. So first story I picked out here, Sizzling Scrambler uh, is the is the headline here. And uh, basically the new scrambler, um, it's, it's feels a bit like old news to me now because it seems like it's been out for ages but it was only a month ago that the details of this bike came out uh, going to be available apparently in the dealers at the end of january which again a bit like uh, bmw with their r1250 gs that came out to the shops a bit earlier than uh, they normally would it looks like Trump have made a good effort here of releasing a bike or announcing a bike and then getting it to the dealers quite quickly afterwards of course it is the end of January now, so uh, it'll be interesting to see if we're starting to see these next week. If so, hopefully I'll get a review. But the new Scrambler looks absolutely incredible, doesn't it? You will have seen loads of um, videos, I expect. I think there was a sort of an official press type launch thing of this, and lots of people went on that uh, and rode it. So check those out if you're interested in the bike. But it just looks amazing. Uh, there's a sort of a, a more off roady, blingy one with uh, higher. Um, travel suspension, Olin's, all that sort of thing, which is the more expensive one. Uh, and then there's the, the more basic one. So I'm, I keep forgetting which, which one is which, but there's the XC and the XE. In fact, I'll probably get to the XE in a minute. Um, so the XC is the uh, on-road focus one, and that's the one that I'm looking at here. Yeah, it looks really nice, but it's um, quite expensive still. Uh, has it got the price in here? No, I haven't got the price on this one, but it's uh, I think it's of the order of about 12 and a half grand, something like that. Oh no, here we go, 11 and a half thousand. Uh, and then the XE is a bit more on top of that, but we'll come to that in a minute. But uh, beautiful looking bike. I think this one is gonna fly off the shelves for Triumph, at least for those people that are, have got a spare 12 grand in their pocket burning a hole. Sadly, I haven't. All right, next one here, special edition Thruxton R Spide. Now again, this is uh, this is quite interesting because this was, as I say, back in end of December, this paper came out. It was the first look at this special um, Thruxton. We now know, of course, because there's been uh, lots of stuff released in the last week, that this is in fact, the new uh, Triumph factory custom, the TFC Thruxton, of which I imagine I'll speak more later, or it might even be in next week's MZN, I don't know, might, maybe it hasn't broken cover yet, but uh, so I'm sure we'll speak more about this in the future, but basically uh, what's happened is Triumph have released a blingy version of the Thruxton. Uh, I think they're only making something like 750 worldwide, it's got worldwide, it's got lots of carbon on it, it's got uh, an engine that's been breathed on slightly, so a bit more horsepower, and it's got a price tag to match. I don't know what the price is, but it's going to be more expensive than a standard Thruxton, but it's uh, sort of the uh, the blingy version, money no object type of Thruxton. But uh, So it was spied back in the end of December and then that launch for the uh, Thruxton uh, Triumph Factory Custom TFC uh, was actually I think last week Triumph had some sort of event again that uh, journalists and so on went to uh, and I've seen some videos on that. So check that out if you're a Thruxton fan and you've got plenty of money again then uh, that might be the bike for you. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I've mentioned in the past, I'm not a huge Thruxton fan actually. I saw, I don't know if you watch um, the Bike Shed Motorcycle Club, they've got a YouTube channel now, it's a great channel to watch. Um, and they, a while back, they posted a video of the guy that runs the bike shed, a fella called Dutch. You probably know the fella I'm talking about. He uh, took a standard Thruxton and he um, basically converted it, customised it to the way he wants it. He's called it the Triumph Hoxton. And to me, it's a much better bike. He's taken the basics of the Thruxton. Uh, he's put some straight handlebars on it, sort of decaf raced it a bit. And it's uh, just a really beautiful looking bike. And uh, in a way, I mean, and he did that before the new Triumph um, uh, what's it called now, the Speed Twin. The new Speed Twin came out after he had done that and his Hoxton is kind of like a Speed Twin. But anyway, I digress. All right, next story that I picked out here, and here it is, it is in fact the Triumph uh, XE. This is the more off-road of the Triumph Scramblers. Uh, 12,300 this, so only actually, what's that, 800 pounds more than the XC? I never understand the way that Triumph do these lettering. Uh, I mean, they have, uh, they have explained it many times, but to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I just wish that, um, Manufacturers would just use names, it would be far easier to remember. But there we are. So the if you want the top spec Triumph Scrambler, that's the XE. It's a bit more off-roady, but 
it does have the uh, fancy Olins, Brembos, and all the uh, fancy Farkles. Uh, it's probably the one that you're gonna get bragging rights for down the pub, even if you don't ride it off-road. But there we go, uh, 12,300, beautiful, beautiful looking bike. I'm really interested to see what this next generation TFT is like, which I think is gonna start to appear on a number of the Triumph range. Um, because, uh, as much as anything, it has this new link up where you can actually control a GoPro camera. And obviously for somebody like me, a vlogger, that is gonna be really good. If you can control multiple cameras from the handlebars, uh, that's gonna be a fantastic thing. Um, you can get things like remote controls for your, for your cameras, but of course they need batteries that are charging. It's another thing to put on your handlebars, etc. So if that's a, a nice bit of work, then that's gonna, that's gonna be an excellent added feature on Triumph bikes for people like me. Not sure it's gonna appeal to the masses, but certainly for vloggers, that's gonna be a good thing. So there we are, the Triumph uh, Scrambler XE, 1200cc, 12,300 pounds. It looks absolutely beautiful. All the reviews I've read have said that it's absolutely brilliant. MCN, no different. Okay, next story I've picked up here. Is 850cc all you need is the uh, headline, and this is uh, MCN's review of the new F850GS Adventure. Now, I've ridden the 850GS, the non-adventure version. I was very impressed with it. I think it's a lovely bike, and I actually came to the same conclusion. If you've not seen my video, if I can, I'll stick a card up on the screen somewhere so you can, uh, so you can go and have a look at that. And I thought, actually, it felt like a proper GS you know, as in a big a big bike, the 1250, it felt the same sort of size. It's got the same TFT, it's got all the same functions. There's, it's an awful lot of bike for the money. If you can't quite stretch to the full fat GS uh, and you're not bothered about bragging rights down the pub, then it's definitely worth checking out the 850. Uh, and now they brought out this adventure version with uh, an increase in fuel capacity and so on. So, um, and uh, what else have we got here? So a few changes over the previous 850. It's got things like the extra riding modes, uh, Enduro, Dynamic, Enduro Pro rather as well. Um, as I say, fuel increase from 15 litres to 23 litres. So it's going to have an excellent range on this bike. And in fact, Michael Guy, who's the journo that did this piece, has agreed with me when you read the verdict that, uh, you know, actually it's enough. You don't have to have a thumping great 1250cc bike. This thing has got all the power you need. No, I agree. I think it's a really, really nice bike. It looks like a proper GS as well. I think I'll put a bigger screen on it though. Uh, these small screens that are all the vogue at the moment just don't seem very effective to me. So, uh, and I think that would enhance the looks as well. Anyway, so that was it for that first paper. As I say, it seems a long time ago now that that one came out. Some of that is actually old news. So sorry about that, but uh, anyway, giving you a bit of a catch up. Right, the next paper then, uh, what's the first story here? Now this is, I think is the one that came out sort of over Christmas. So it's a sort of a bumper issue. And I've got five stories I've picked out here. Bit of a surprise as to what's what. So first one here, uh, London Mayor chimes in. This is about the, or clears the air, sorry. This is about that, um, the emission charge stuff. Do you remember, you may remember on the last bike news, I talked about the fact that there's this new ultra low emission zone coming in, and it meant that a number of bikes uh, wouldn't be eligible to go into uh, London without paying an additional charge. Um, now, in fact, the information I gave last month was incorrect. I just read out what was in MCN and they made an error. They said that some bikes that weren't, uh, I think it was Euro 4 compliant, wouldn't make it. In fact, it's Euro 3, so it's pre-2007 bikes that are going to be will pick up the charge. Um, so I'm okay uh, for things like my 2012 Street Triple that I thought might be excluded. So let's just clarify that. If it's a non-Euro 3, so a bike that's um, uh, pre-2007, uh, you won't be able to enter the charging zone from April this year without paying the fee. Um, so anyway, so there we go. So that's uh, hopefully clarified that. Sorry for the error last time. Again, I was only reading what was in the paper. All right, the next thing. Now this story I was very excited about. And again, there's been some more about this bike uh, has leaked since this paper came out. But this is uh, the story here, the rocket returns. Radical new Triumph Rocket 3 to be unleashed this summer. Now since this kind of artist's impression was released, we've seen again on that uh, Triumph Factory Custom videos that have come out, that they have in fact launched a Triumph Factory Custom version of the Rocket 3. Now the word on the street, particularly from MCN is, there's no way they'll bring out a TFC bike without bringing out later a basic rocket as well. So the TFC one looks absolutely amazing, but I expect will be expensive. No prices released yet, but I'm thinking that's gonna be about a 20 grand bike. Let's hope the standard rocket will be a little bit less than that and a little bit more accessible. Because when I read this, I or saw this picture, I have to say, my heart skipped a little beat. Not often do I see a bike that I think, wow, I really like that, I really want one of those. I felt like that when the Panigale first came out. But this is one of those bikes. I'm not really a cruiser guy, although I have ridden a few, few cruisers in the last year, and I've become a bit of a convert. And that's the sort of a genre of bike that's missing from my garage. So I'm thinking, if this is coming out in 2020, that gives me about a year to sort of 
warm up Mrs. Flyer to the idea that I might want another bike uh, and start to get some money together. Um, again, no prices yet, don't know how much it's gonna be, and this is just an artist's impression on this particular article, but my goodness me, doesn't that look like a beautiful, beautiful bike? So uh, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing a lot more about this bike in the next few months. Looks like it uh, could be released as a, as a new Rocket 3. There's no Rocket 3 in the range at the moment. In early 2020, that'll be the first time you can get one, but uh, I'm thinking I might get an order in for one of those. It just looks awesome. I mean, the engine just, I love that. There's something about it. It says to me, it's like the AC Cobra of motorcycling and uh, and I like it. All right, so there's that. So that I might have just uh, given you a leak on what my next bike will be. That one absolutely looks brilliant. Okay, next up here. 20th anniversary R1, Ultimate R1 brakes cover. So here we are, another one of these bikes that's inaccessible to all but the richest biker, 35,000 pounds this one. They're only gonna make 20 of them. Uh, it's full of things like titanium and Olins and special electronics straight from the race bikes. But uh, I only point it out because it's a, it's a beautiful looking machine, uh, but 35 grand. Um, as I say, they're only making 20. They're I think they're already all sold out actually. Um, yeah, bad news is they're 35 grand and they're all sold out. So um, <laughs> amazing. I, it's, I'm glad that bike manufacturers do do these things because it does show what they can do. But of course, they are dream bikes for the rest of us that will probably just go into a collector's garage somewhere and never actually be ridden, which is a shame. But that just shows what Yamaha can do with the R1, very nice. Okay, next up, there's, just, there's been lots of articles on the upcoming London Bike Show, which is something that I think MCN sponsors. In fact, it is called the MCN London XL Bike Show, together with Carol Ash, the insurance company. Um, now, this is I, I mentioned this because this is a show I do quite like, actually. Uh, a couple of months ago, in fact, I wrote my article in MCN uh, saying how much I dislike the NEC show. It's difficult to get into, it's expensive, etc., etc. But the London show, I find, is a bit more acceptable, mainly because if you're going there on your bike, Number one, your bike is the easiest way to get there uh, because you can actually park undercover at the Excel Centre and the, you know there's security, it's all safe. So, and, and because it's London, it's, it would be quite difficult to drive there. So it's fantastic to ride to on your bike. There's um, places you can keep your kit and so on. But when you get there, it's a little bit smaller than the NEC show. It's a bit easier to walk around and they have all pretty much the same bikes there. The, all the main manufacturers are there. The stands are very similar to what were at the NEC, often just slightly cut down versions. But if you want to just see the bikes, this is the one to go to. So I am planning to go to the London Motorcycle Show just as a normal punter, not in any official capacity, but uh, if you're planning to go, I may see you there, do come and say hello uh, if you see me wandering around. Not sure which day I'm gonna go yet, probably on the Saturday, I guess, maybe the Sunday, don't know. But the London Motorbike Show, if you've not been and you missed out on the NEC this year, I'm just saying, it's a good show. Um, it, it just feels a bit easier to get around and you still see most of the same stuff that you get at Motorcycle Live, so I shall be going to that one. Okay, next story. Uh, CCM is a high flyer. Here we go. So this is uh, the first review that I've read on the Spitfire Calf Racer from CCM. I've talked about CCM before. Uh, UK manufacturer, uh, based up north. Uh, in the main, I love their bikes. All the bikes, in fact, they've done based on the original Spitfire that they did a couple of years ago. They've got different flavors of the Spitfire I like. The only one I don't like, actually, is the one that I mentioned possibly in the last Bike News, which was the Foggy um, Racer Special. I just don't think that one looks quite right for some reason. But the rest look good, and this is the first time that I've seen an actual uh, write-up, a proper review about the bike. Now, I think I might have mentioned in the past that I very nearly put money down on a deposit for the original Spitfire. In the end, I didn't because I hadn't read any reviews and it was just too much of a leap in the dark to spend 10 grand on a bike that I'd never seen ridden or read any reviews about. Um, so this is the first review I've seen. 9,274 the calf racer comes in at. Um, and uh, Michael Neves basically says that um, it's, a, it's a lovely bike, nice and light, great for sunny Sunday cruising. Uh, maybe doesn't have um, the performance and handling of um, maybe the more uh, usual run-of-the-mill um, mass production bikes, but if it's you know, something exclusive you want, then this is a bike to look at. Nine, as I say, 9,274 actually isn't a bad price for something that effectively is a custom bike. You're not gonna see many of these on the road, so it might appeal to you if you're the sort of person that likes, uh, you know, it's all about style and image rather than actual riding. Uh, in a way, I'm kind of glad now that I didn't put the money down. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's, I, I made that sound bad, like it's not a good review. It is a good review but um, it's not a mass-produced bike, so you know, bikes that are effectively hand-built hand always have their foibles, don't they? But uh, lovely looking machines, the CCM Spitfire range, and I, I wish them all the best and uh, a lot of success with it. Good stuff. Alrighty, so that was the second paper. Don't know how we're doing. Uh, I think uh, actually looking at the little clock on the camera, coming up to 15 minutes, maybe this will have to be a two-parter. I don't know, if I suddenly cut off, there'll be a part two to come. All right, now this paper, look, goodness me, I tried to get no more than four stories from each of these papers. Well, by the way, at the end of the video, or indeed if there is a part two, I'll be going through some parish notices as well. So stick around and stay tuned for that, for some details about what's coming up on the channel and indeed other people's channels soon. Anyway, this paper, six, six stories I've found here. Um, 
your guess is as good as mine as what they are. As I said, it was a while ago when I read these. So first one here. Um, uh, Brexit may hit stolen bike recoveries. <laughs> now normally, I stay away from politics on the Missenden Flyer, and I'm certainly not getting into Brexit and whether it's a good or bad thing. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that. But this particular story just got me a bit because it basically it's saying that Brexit, uh, if we have a, a hard departure, a hard uh, Brexit, um, it could make, mean that your bike's not going to be recovered if you've got a tracker because we're going to uh, lose things like um, access to the Europe's global navigation system, GNSS which is absolute tosh. In my mind, this is, uh, this is rubbish bit of reporting. I don't know if uh, MCN have picked this up from somewhere else and just regurgitated it or what, but some, somebody's been um, uh, quoted here saying that we won't have access. Dr. Ken German, here we are, a motorcycle crime expert. He said that uh, stolen machines, tracking stolen machines could be compromised by Brexit. Have you ever heard of such tosh in your life? He's saying that because we'll no longer be part of Europe's GNSS, that's going to affect your system. Well, I don't know if he's been misquoted or what, because he's obviously a clever man if he's got a doctor in front of his title. But if you've got a machine, a device that already receives GNSS, it will continue to receive GNSS after Brexit. We use GNSS in the aviation world as well. If you've already got a GPS that receives uh, GNSS signals as well as GPS, you ain't going to suddenly stop getting them. There's no way the GNSS satellites know who's receiving their data. It doesn't work like that. So that was just a bit of a rubbish story. So sorry, MCN, about that, but I, I really didn't like that story. I just thought that was poor reporting. Moving swiftly on, though, I don't want to go down that uh, whole Brexit rat hole, but that one I couldn't let lie. All right, second thing here. Toratech build five hot boxes. Now check this out. There was me thinking that uh, Triumph had absolutely nailed the Scrambler. But uh, Toratech have come along and they've taken a BMW R9T and Scramblerized it. I've uh, mentioned before, I, I love the Scrambler style of bikes. I don't like the calf racer ones. I know there are people that are the other way around. Uh, but check this out. Look at this picture here of what Toratech have done. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible. They've built five of these, uh, or are going to build five. Uh, and I think you can buy them. Price is yet to be released, so we don't know how much they're going to be. And I'm sure they'll fly off the shelves. But who would have thought an R9T could look so good. They've got some longer travel suspension. They've uh, given it a fancy paint scheme. It's got, uh, looks like a, a new pipe on it. Uh, all sorts of stuff, uprated forks, um, different wheels. It just looks absolutely brilliant. It's lost some weight as well. 40 kilograms, believe it or not, they've managed to shave off the, the standard R9T. That's gonna feel like a lightweight bike. Uh, the R9T doesn't feel like a heavy bike anyway, but with 40 kilograms off it, that makes it a proper scrambler proposition with a big old bash plate as well. Really, really nice. Just shows what can be done. So well done, Toratech, for doing that. Such a shame there's only five going to be made and uh, you know it's not going to be a production machine. If BMW made that, they would fly off the shelves again, I'm sure. What do you reckon? Do you think that looks good or not? Let me know. All right, next, uh, next story here. Scrap number plates. This is a story here in... Uh, in the letters page, um, somebody called Peter Wilson has sent an email in saying that uh, why is it that we have to have number plates still? Often we complain about the size of British number plates. I often get a lot of comments on my videos. What is that monstrosity on the back of your bike? It's huge. And I agree, they are pretty big. Uh, and I think they need to be big well, I was going to say because of the camera number plate recognition, but they've been that size forever, long before number plate recognition cameras came along. Um, but basically what Peter is saying, sure the technology exists these days because you've got a VIN number and things like RFID and stuff, there must be a way of making a bike recognisable and unique without sticking a darn great number plate on the back. There may well be, I don't know, I don't know what technology he would be referring to here. Um, but uh, it could, I'm, I'm sure it would cause issues as well. He's talking about putting some sort of low cost microchip on bikes, a bit like you do with the dog. And there may well be something in that, but uh, if you're a policeman or work in traffic, how would that affect things? Obviously, uh, number plate recognition wouldn't work anymore, so it might be difficult to track vehicles for um, crime and so on. Uh, not sure, but I do like the idea of scrapping number plates. Wouldn't it be great if you could do away with them? Because uh, just having a number plate hanger ruins the looks of a bike, doesn't it? So I'm with you, Peter, on the idea, whether it's actually possible or not, don't know. But uh, anyway, that was just a story that piqued my interest. I just hadn't thought about that before, the idea of doing away with them, let alone making them smaller. Okay, uh, next after item here. MCN occasionally run a story, well in fact each week, uh, called Best of British, where they focus on a British engineering firm. And this week they focused on ABBA motorcycle stands. I only mention it, I don't usually mention this article, uh, because normally it's not, frankly, it's not that interesting, but I'm a massive fan of ABBA stands. They're not, they don't sponsor me, I've never been in touch with them in any way. I've got one of their stands, I use it to pick up all my bikes, uh, rather than a paddock stand. They're a bit easier to use if you're on your own in the garage because of the leverage they give you. If you've not come across ABBA stands before, check them out. Um, but brilliant, I mean, here they are, they've got, uh, you know, a unit. They're knocking out these Abastans and making a great product that no one else is making. So uh, thumbs up to Abastans. Uh, and if you wondered what Abba stands for, it's Alan Bennett Bike Accessories. Uh, that's where Abba came from. It's nothing to do with uh, 
um, knowing me, knowing you, and all that stuff, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. Um, so if you're not coming across, if you're a new biker and you want and you haven't got a centre stand on your bike and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to get a, a um, paddock stand to lift your bike up to do chain maintenance, you can do that. But using an ABBA stand on your own, uh, not an ABBA stand, a paddock stand on your own, can be quite fraught with danger and a bit of a tricky operation. So uh, check out ABBA stands. I think you might be impressed with those. Right, next up here, Yamaha Dirt Devil. This is the Tenere 700, uh, which has been vaunted for some time, and it's been a bit under my radar, actually. I haven't really mentioned this much. In the main, I'm not a big fan of bikes that look like they belong in the Dakar. So this, you know, this sort of front looking, the big, the upright screen and so on. But the Tenere 700, actually, I think looks pretty good. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great bike as well. Uh, I think this is the sort of bike, again, back to the previous thing we were talking about earlier about not needing to have um, massive engines on these big adventure bikes. If you are doing an around the world trip or something, this Tenere 700 could be exactly the bike for you. Nice and light, um, 73 brake horsepower, so it's no slouch. Uh, 689 cc parallel twin, um, no prices yet, but it does look the business, and I think this, this could be a proper practical round the world proposition, or indeed, if you want to do some green laning in this country, uh, or you, you do a lot of off-road work, but you don't just, you know, you don't want an enduro bike type thing, but something more adventure but not the full fat Multistrada GS KTM Super Adventure. So let's see how the Tenere 700 does. I think that looks really nice. Um, yeah, so there we go, that's the Tenere 700. And then last but not least in this paper, King of Cool, Speed Twin Blends Modern Tech with traditional style. Uh, and this, as I, I mentioned it before, didn't I, the, the new Triumph Speed Twin. It's another one of these uh, bikes that Triumph have let out. They've been releasing loads of bikes in the last few months. Uh, this one, classic retro looking bike, but they've basically taken the guts of the Thruxton, which by all accounts is a fabulous bike. I personally, as I mentioned before, just don't like calf racers styling. But they've taken all the good bits, the engine, etc., and put it into a classic uh, shape Triumph uh, Bonneville. So a T120 engine, um, or, or the engine from the Thruxton rather, proper handlebars, upright riding position, nice paint job. I think this one again is gonna be well worth looking at. Um, it's gonna cost, how much does this one cost? Doesn't say a price TBC still, but 96 brake horsepower. Uh, it's 10 kilograms lighter than the Thruxton as well, and the Thruxton wasn't particularly uh, heavy. Looking forward, if I can, to having a ride on one of these, if there's a friendly dealer around that'll lend me one when they're out. I'm sure they will be, they're always friendly. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the new Triumph Speed Twin, looks absolutely awesome, doesn't it? I hope you agree. All right, that was that paper. Gosh, whipping through them. 